G'day guys and welcome back to yet another Insta360X3 video. In today's video, I want to share how I use the Insta360X3, the settings I use, how I export the footage, and basically everything that you need to know in order to get the best possible image quality coming from the X3. So without further ado, let's just kick it off with preparation and planning. Now, before I head out to shoot the videos, I always like to have a, a plan of what I want to film and how I want that to look. But the good thing about the X3 is that it doesn't really matter because it's a 360 camera, so it records everything around you. But there's still some minor preparations I do before I head out. So the first thing is to make sure that the X3 is secure and uh, it also comes with this pouch here. This is included when you buy the X3. And what's really nice about this is that you can just place it inside and you have access to the charging port and everything on the side here and this will actually protect your lens. So when I'm not shooting the videos, I always put on this pouch here to secure the lenses. So when I throw it in the backpack, in my pocket, anywhere, it's always secure. And when I'm shooting my videos, I can just take this off. And the good thing about this is that this also works somewhat as a cleaning cloth. So when you take it off, you can actually clean the lenses with this and you will have a perfectly you know, clean lens when you shoot your videos, which is pretty awesome. Another thing which is really important as well when you plan your trip is the accessories you choose. This will vary depending on what and how you want to film your videos, but your main accessory is always gonna be that invisible selfie stick. As long as you have this, you can just about film anything. But I do have my favorites though, which is the three meter selfie stick and also this 114 centimeter vlog stick, which I call it, and also the motorcycle clamp, which allows me to clamp this to just about anything. And this is the only accessories that I need when I make content here on my channel. But when I ride my motorcycle, for example, I do prefer the remote. So this is something which is always connected to the X3 when I'm out riding. But as long as I have the motorcycle clamp and the uh, selfie stick, I'm pretty much all set. Now, when it comes to shooting these videos, it's basically straightforward. You record a 360 video, which you later reframe in the studio or mobile app. So the only thing you have to do is to press the record button and hold the camera as you want. But there is a few things to consider when you're out shooting your videos, like how is the lighting condition, where is the sun, and how should you hold the camera in harsh lighting conditions, what are the settings you should use, and so on. The first thing, which is also the most important thing, is still going to be the accessories. So this is not only going to make it easier for you, but it will also determine what type of videos you'll be able to film. So for my style of shooting, I would need a 3 meter selfie stick, a backpack which allows me to fasten that selfie stick to get that bird's eye tracking shot, and a shorter selfie stick, usually the 114 centimeter one, and something I can use to mount the camera in different places. For this, we have a lot of different options, like the motorcycle clamp, which I just mentioned, and we also have the monkey tail, and we have the suction cup, and we also have all the different accessories. I suggest checking out the accessories from PGY Tech, though, called Cap Lock, which is one of my favorite accessories to use with the X3. Now, before I head out to shoot some epic videos, there's actually no point in deciding what type of settings to use because the conditions might change. So it's more important to plan out what you want to shoot first and then change the settings later. And in most scenarios, you won't need to change the settings at all. And the shots with the best image quality actually comes from how you hold the camera and not the settings you use. I've been using auto settings for almost two years now and the quality I'm able to pull from this camera is much better with auto settings than if I would use manual settings. So let's break it down. The X3 has two lenses. And in between these lenses, we have what's called the stitch line. And this is also the weakest point of a 360 camera. So you want to avoid this as much as possible, especially if you plan on framing yourself. Even though the X3 is a 360 camera, you can still get your shots ruined by the stitch line if you're not aware of how it works in reality. So regardless of how you hold, mount, or record videos with the X3, you always have to keep it as steady as possible and in the same position, especially when it comes to rotating the camera. The more 
you rotate the camera, the more processing is required in order to stitch the video. So less movement equals higher quality. Another huge factor is how you angle the camera. So for example, camera versus sun or camera versus yourself when you're vlogging, for example, or all three combined. So the placement of the camera versus subject versus the sun. And here it doesn't really matter where the sun is as long as you keep one of the lenses towards the subject or object you want to film. But you can always minimize the amount of sun hitting the lens by holding the camera at a 45 degree angle. This will help reduce the shutter a little bit and give you that better looking image with minimal effort. But the most important thing is to always try to aim the top of the camera towards the sun. This will preserve a stable exposure and keep the shutter speed as low as possible. But if there's no sun and you're shooting on a cloudy day, it doesn't really matter how you hold the camera as long as you make sure to have one of the lenses facing the subject or object that you want to film. Even though it's a 360 camera and you're able to reframe and change the angle in post later, you still want to use it in somewhat the same way as a regular action camera and try to avoid the stitching as much as possible. So here's a few examples of how I mount the Insta360 X3 in different scenarios. So for the backpack shot, I mounted 3 meter selfie stick on the backpack itself and this is the Low Pro 450W which has a pouch for tripods which is perfect for a selfie stick as well and it also got these belt locks which keeps everything in place. I also place the X3 in a position so one of the lenses is facing forward and the other lens is facing backwards. And this will give me that extra crisp quality because most of the shots will be showing the front and the back. And the few times I'm framing the camera to show the environment, it will be a faster movement. Maybe with some additional motion blur as well so you won't be seeing much of that stitch line. Now as a vlogging, there's only one way of holding the camera basically. And that is at a 45 degree angle. This will give you the best result if you're using auto settings and you will be able to avoid most of the stitching when you reframe later. And also here, when I move the camera around to different positions to show the environment and I also want to include myself, I always keep the camera in the same position and try to keep the selfie stick and camera as static as possible. The more movement and rotation you have to the camera when changing position, the more likely it is to see the split between the two lenses. And the same goes for motor vlogging. Here I use the motorcycle clamp from Insta360 with the 114 centimeter selfie stick as well as the three meter pole. When I mount this on the handlebar, for example, I always tilt it a little bit forward, so around 30-ish degrees. And this actually makes a huge difference, not only when reframing myself or the road ahead of me, but also it helps protect the camera from rocks, gravel, whatever might come from the cars in front of you. So to have an angle to the camera will add more protection and the damage is more likely to happen to the top of the camera instead of the lenses. Now as of diving, it's basically the same as vlogging, but underwater. Here I also keep the stick and the camera as static as possible. As soon as I start adding rotation to the camera, you'll see the stitch lines. And the best way to avoid these when you're underwater is to have one of the lenses facing you or straight upwards and the other one straight down. And this is actually really important if you want amazing underwater shots, because when you're diving with a 360 camera, you also also have another element to consider, which is the water. When the water travels around the dive case, especially around the stitch lines, you will clearly see the image wobbling. So the only way to prevent this is to keep the camera as still as possible and in the same position. But of course, if you find a lot of fish, maybe a shark, maybe a reef you want to record or anything like that, you should always change the position of the camera so one of the lenses is facing what you want to record. And the last one is hiking. This is exactly the same as vlogging, but here I also changed things up a bit. So most of the time I actually use the three meter pole because I want to share the entire hiking experience and I think a longer selfie stick is the way to go. And here I also add a few different shots like over the shoulder, the backpack shots, and I also extend it to three meters and hold it in front of me to get that fake drone follow shot. And for all these shots, I always plan out the movement. So when I go from over the shoulder to the front shot, I always make sure to have the movement as smooth as possible. But the most important thing is to keep the camera in the same position when you do these movements. If you already have the X3, you can go out and test yourself, do a few basic movements from left to right for example without thinking about rotation or placement or anything like that, and then do another one where you plan out the movement of the camera first and try to keep it as smooth as possible and keep the Insta360 X3 in the exact same position and you should be able to see a clear difference between the two clips. 
Now, when it comes to editing or reframing your 360 videos, there is a few different ways to do so. We have a plugin for Premiere Pro and After Effects, which allows you to reframe the 360 videos directly inside these softwares, but there is a catch to this. This is $10 a month for each of these softwares, so it will be quite expensive. And we also have the Studio and Mobile app from Insta360, where the Studio app will give you the best looking image and the smoothest movement between each keyframe. And the Mobile app will give you a huge selection of creative features to make your 360 videos look different. On the mobile app, you will have a dedicated tutorial which will take you through the different sections and run you through the different features, buttons, and basically everything you need to know in order to edit a video. But since the Studio app is the one I use 99% of the time, I want to share my workflow and the settings I use to export high quality videos. So here we have a clip from one of our previous trips to Hawaii and the way that I do this is basically straightforward. So the first thing I do is to go to the point where I want the video to start, so about here. And then I select this uh, uh, trim icon here, which will trim the clip at the beginning. So that means the clip is now gonna start from this position. And at the beginning here, I always add a keyframe by adding a keyframe with this icon right here. And once this is uh, made, I can just move the camera around as I want. And I want this to be the starting point right here. So I'm gonna move the camera there. And I'm just gonna go through the clip here and I want the next one to be right here here but i also want this to be changed a little bit since the camera is now going straight forward and i want it to follow my wife here so i'm gonna put it somewhere like that so now we have the motion from this one which is uh, going from this position right here and it will follow her as she takes the turn here to the left and it will be pretty smooth and seamless now there is a few ways you can make this even uh, smoother and that is by selecting the line in between these two keyframes and then select the last option which is fade in fade out and if you're familiar with speed ramping it kind of does the same thing so when we select this and do a playback now it will start slow and then once it reaches the middle between these two keyframes we will have the biggest movement and then it will gradually slow down to the last keyframe here so here we can see that it starts pretty slow and as it gets to the middle, we will have that turn in the image and then it will gradually fade out again. And this is basically everything I do to the videos that I export and share here on YouTube. And the other thing is if I want to make a sudden change here, so I want to frame myself, what I like to do after this last keyframe is to just make one keyframe right here and just leave that as it is because this is gonna be the placeholder for the same uh, adjustments which is done to the one uh, before it so i'm not going to do any changes to this and then i'm going to move forward in time here and make another keyframe and for this keyframe i'm actually going to change the position so now i'm in frame and what i can do here is to click on the line between these two keyframes here and select the fade in fade out So now we will see that this last keyframe or the third one is a placeholder and as soon as it gets past that it will start to gradually turn and then we will have that rapid turn and it will slow down again. So this is basically how I edit and, uh, and reframe these type of videos. Now when it comes to exporting, if this is the entire sequence that I want to share, I'm going to select the icon right here which is trim out, that means the video is going to stop here. The next thing is to go over to the export button here, select that, and then I'm gonna change the resolution from whatever it says here to 4K, so 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. I'm always using a bitrate of 200 as well. You don't need to do that. It will only make the files bigger. It's not gonna be any quality differences. I think, I'm not sure, but this is what I was told uh, by Insta360, which would be, you know, the best uh, bitrate to export with so this is what I'm doing and that's basically it you can change the coding if you want to do that I always export with H.264 but you can change this to ProRes if you want to do that again that will only make the files larger and I see no differences in quality between H.264 and ProRes 422 so I'm sticking with H.264 then I'm going to add this to Q and once this is added to Q uh, we can select both of the clips here I have another one here which I want to export and then select both right click and start export. So that's basically everything that I do when it comes to exporting these clips inside the Insta360 Studio app, nothing else and the magic actually happens inside of Final Cut Pro or the editing software of your choice.
So now moving over to Final Cut Pro here and we can see that we have the same clip as we exported in the Insta360 Studio app and this looks pretty good uh, as it is but I want to add that extra spice to the footage making it look even better. So what I like to do here is to first add an adjustment layer here and just place that on top and I wanna do all the correction and grading on this so I don't have it on the clip itself. And that means I can just, if I have multiple clips, I can just extend the adjustment layer or I can copy it from one to the other so I can match the color grading as well. So what I wanna do first now is to um, select the adjustment layer and I want to go over to the color wheels here and we can see here on the waveform that nothing is peaking on the highlights or the shadows, but I still wanna take the highlights maybe a little bit down and also the uh, shadows, the mid-tones, maybe a little bit up just to make it a little bit brighter. And I also want to add some additional colors here. So we're gonna take the colors of the mid-tones and bring up and take the shadows and bring maybe a little bit down. And the next step is actually to add a custom LUT. Uh, this is what makes it for me uh, to add my own signature LUT because they are enhancing the footage coming from these cameras. So what I'm gonna do is to select uh, Hawaii and you can see how this is manipulating the colors as well. And there's all different types of uh, LUTs here for different scenarios, uh, but Hawaii is the one that I like to use the most. And once we apply this, you can go in and you can further do some adjustments here. You can increase the mid-tones, you can decrease them, same with the shadows as well, and you can also add some more uh, colors here. So this is now before and this is after. And this is basically everything that I do to these clips. When it comes to settings and, and all of that, it's all the same. It's basic auto settings because auto settings are working the best for any scenario if you're not using uh, the camera to shoot cinematic videos. If you shoot cinematic videos, you don't want the exposure to change. So that's when you want to um, you know, add the manual settings and play around with those. But for normal everyday travel videos or making content here on YouTube, which is, you know, just to share your experience of travel or when you are doing things with your kids and stuff like that, you want to use auto because auto is the best. And Insta360 has, especially the X3, has one of the best, if not the best auto white balance correction. So you want to keep this on auto as well, especially when it comes to underwater. But this is, like I said, everything that I do to these uh, clips. There is no hidden features or secret things that I do. The only thing that I apply is my signature LUTs, which has been made to enhance uh, the 360 videos coming from the Insta360 X3 and the One RS One inch. And if you want that extra spice to make your image look better, don't forget to check out my signature LUTs as well. There is a 10% discount in the description below. So yeah, that's basically how I use Insta360 X3. And if you found any value in today's video, make sure to drop a like down below. Oh, and if you're brand new here and want to see more camera related videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So that's everything for today's video. We hope that you enjoyed it. So until next time, take care. Bye-bye.